House Democrats are reportedly arguing about who is at fault for the Democrats' lackluster performance in this election. Centrists are saying it's the left, and the left are not necessarily saying that it's centrists. They're just saying, no, these ideas are popular. But here's what's indisputable. Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, had it not been for their popularity and grassroots fundraising effort, Joe Biden may have not been able to win Michigan and Minnesota. If he won, it's because they dragged him across the finish line, not the other way around. And we have numbers to prove that this is the case. So as Kenny Stansel of Common Dreams reports, Congresswomen Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, members of the progressive squad in the U.S. House who represent districts in the states of Michigan and Minnesota respectively, received applause and praise Thursday for their role in lifting Joe Biden in those two battleground states, pivotal victories that have helped put the former vice president on the verge of ousting President Donald Trump. Among the nation's most progressive legislators, Omar represents Minneapolis and its nearby suburbs, while Tlaib represents portions of Detroit and and some of its suburbs in Wayne County. Both lawmakers campaigned heavily for Biden leading up to this week's election, and observers say Biden's victories in those states may not have been materialized had it not been for that heavy lifting which propelled huge turnout in diverse districts. While the Biden-Harris campaign resisted in-person canvassing, Omar's campaign kept doing it, hiring dozens of people to knock on doors and pull out votes, the Washington Post reported earlier this week. Ken Martin, the chairman of Minnesota's Democratic Farmer Labor Party, told the Post that Omar doesn't need to increase turnout here to win her race. She could take a vacation and she'd get reelected easy. But, Martin added, she recognizes that she has a responsibility to drive up turnout. It's really important for all of our statewide races, especially the presidential race. According to Martin, Omar does really intensive face-to-face -face contacts with a lot of personal relationship building and building long-term power with communities of color, something that a lot of politicians don't do. Tlaib is also no stranger to to organizing in her district. Direct voter contact wins elections, Tlaib tweeted on Wednesday night. Our team knocked doors, called and texted residents, and registered folks who had never voted before. In a late September op-ed in the Post, Omar argued that Democrats ought to focus on engaging non-voters with ambitious egalitarian policies in order to perform better going forward. I have seen the media and even Democrats fall for Trump's argument that Omar's left-wing stances will benefit Republicans, she lamented. We need to win over four former Trump voters, the thinking goes, and we can't do that if we embrace progressive leaders and policies. But while winning swing voters is important, there is a key constituency Democrats need in November that is almost entirely left out of the conversation. Non-voters, she wrote. At an event in North Minneapolis last week, Omar told supporters, it is our votes here that are going to make sure not only do we strongly win this state, but that we don't see Trump's face ever again. So think about this. Ilhan Omar's re-election was... A guarantee, basically. But she still did grassroots, get out the vote efforts in her district to make sure that Joe Biden would have a better chance at winning the state. And do you think that she is going to be thanked for this? Do you think that her ideas will be taken seriously for this? Same with Tlaib? Of course not. Now, contrast what we just heard with Joe Biden and Donald Trump's strategy. So in August, Politico reported Trump's campaign knocks on a million doors a week. Biden's knocks on zero. Now, in October, his campaign decided to change that strategy because it's not a good strategy, and they began knocking on doors after all, just 33 days before the election. So it is indisputable that had Joe Biden done this sooner, he probably would be in better shape. Now, the reasons that they cited for not doing in-person canvassing, I think, were legitimate. You know, it's difficult to campaign during a global pandemic. I get that. However, I've spoken with many grassroots candidates who claimed that they have been able to adopt. You can knock on a door, step back six feet while wearing a mask and protect your staffers, protect other people. But Joe Biden didn't necessarily see that as a path to victory or didn't see it as necessary. But in these crucial battleground states, you can't afford to not do that. Like I get that they tried to make up for it with more digital organizing, but you're not going to reach everyone digitally or by the phone. You have to do in-person canvassing. When it comes to Rashida Tlaib, 
This is what she accomplished. More than 500,000 voter contacts. And when it comes to their success rate, they contacted over 200,000 voters. They knocked on 42,650 doors. They made 300,000 plus calls and they sent almost 260,000 text messages. And when it comes to Ilhan Omar, that 88% turnout really is something that is just remarkable with 400,000 ballots cast in her district alone. Let me tell you something, 88% turnout is insane. That tells you that what she specifically is doing in that district is a winning strategy. It's remarkable. She's representing her constituents consistently, producing policies that will help them. Cancellation of student debt, Medicare for all. So for Democrats to not emulate what she's doing, it's a missed opportunity, to say the least. And I think that Jamal Bowman put it best by saying, just so we're clear, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib were major factors in delivering Minnesota and Michigan for Joe Biden. And that's exactly it. They weren't the only factors why Joe Biden won. But had it not been for them, we might have seen another four years of Donald Trump. And that is something that we can't allow the media and centrists to just dismiss because their efforts helped defeat Donald Trump. And they did it not by pretending to be centrists and trying to appeal to Republican voters. They did this by getting out the vote, exciting people, doing in-person, grassroots fundraising, can canvassing, things that you have to do to reach new people. And we saw the efficacy of this strategy play out in real time. So, you know, other centrist Democrats like Abigail Spanberger can try to blame the left for, you know, Democrats not performing as well as everyone had hoped. But had it not been for the left that she blames, it might be worse for everyone. So uh, make sure that we remind centrist Democrats and neoliberals about this fact whenever they try to talk about how, oh, well, it's the far left who pushed Biden so far. It's socialism that hurt you know, uh, Joe Biden, he adopted too many of Bernie's ideas. No, no. It's that he didn't embrace leftist politics and populist politics enough.